Now, this is my bedroom, and it's a bit of a mess. And it's just really not working because there's just stuff everywhere. And it needs changing, and it needs painting. So that is exactly what we're going to do. So, first of all, we've got to get all of this out. Um, all of that out. All of this out. We'll probably leave that one in, that one in, and obviously the bed, because the bed's huge, because I bought the wrong size. Um, and then paint and rearrange. I kind of like the bed on this wall, but I'm thinking it might have to go on that wall. But I don't know yet. I'm not sure how I can... Although I think I may have just come up with another idea of how to rearrange it better. Hmm. We shall see. Watch your space. Okay, so we've emptied most of the room. There's just a few bits left in there. So I've already done some of the skirting board and the window sill, so they're looking a lot brighter. Let me see if I can find a bit to compare. I don't know if you can see that down there. There it is. So we're going to do this wall first. Let me just zoom out. Hold on. Back to photography there. Ignore the mess. Right. So we're going to do this wall first. Which is the wall where the door is. So if I had to mask... To be fair, when I did the skirting board, I didn't mask anything off. I did it freehand. Um, which isn't too bad, I don't think, if you can see that. <clears throat> uh, don't advise doing that. They really should mask off the carpet and the wall. Uh, so as you can see there, we've masked off the edge of the skirting, plug sockets, light switch, we've masked off around the door, we've done the beam at the top, we've done the con the uh, stone supports have come out, because this bit of the building is an extension, this one room is an extension to the original part of the, the building. Um, so yeah, we've got everything masked off, so we're all, all ready to go now. Um, we have masked off this. The we would not you would not normally have to mask off the wall up to where you're painting to, but because this wall is going the only wall that's going to be this colour, obviously you've had to mask off the walls on each side as well. Um, <clears throat> obviously things are expensive nowadays, um, and lots of people might be thinking of doing stuff themselves. Who me have paid people to do it for them before? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe you're not, but this just gives you. An idea of some of the steps. You know, don't by no means am I an expert, and by no means is it going to be perfect. But yeah, so as you can see, the walls are pretty, pretty dull, pretty patchy as well. I don't know if he painted this last. Wasn't me, that's for sure. So yeah, we'll get this uh, Sean Road. We're going to be using the roller. That's the colour of the paint. Well, good choice or not? Just put a little bit on the wall with the brush. So we're going to start. Um, one thing to obviously remember is the rollers will give you some splash back, but they are the quickest way of getting some good coverage on the wall. So, let's see if I can fall when I've done it. Oh, I don't think we're recording any of that. That's brilliant. So there we go, we started anyway. What I was saying was if you're using a roller, be wary of splash back. Um, you will get it when it comes back onto your hands as well a little bit. You can get rollers that have got edges on them, so you can go right up to the edge. Um, but we're not doing that, so we're going to be using a brush to do this bit here. Um, this has all just been rolled on. Um, I thought my phone was recording. Turns out it wasn't, so... We'll, we'll just show you. Just try not to get paint on my phone. And obviously where you've started initially, you'll have more paint there, so you can keep going over that bit, just to spread the paint out. You have to excuse my dodgy camera work, it's not easy to do this one-handed. Because the walls are textured as well, it's not the easiest thing. It'd be really nice to be able to have them sanded down and everything else, but we don't have that kind of time. And then what we'll do is, in that bit there, we'll finish off with the brush. Uh, so I probably need two coats, it's well case paint, so two coats is always at least a minimum. Um, but for the rest of the walls, I think we've got a one coat Dulux, so that should be good. 
But again, because it's textured walls, we might need to do a second coat with that as well. But it's coming along nicely. Anyway, I'm going to turn you off now, and then uh, I'll show you the finished when I've done the rest of the wall. So there we go. You can see it's drying fairly quickly. First coat. It's definitely going to need another one that you can see where it's patchy. Even, uh... but yeah, I think that should brighten the room up a bit, don't you? Exciting times. Um, the trouble with textured walls, it takes <laughs> textured walls is they're a pain to paint. So you'll always get little white bits you have to go over and stuff. And it's why, like some of the edges, you can see where if if it wasn't textured, you I mean you still still should use masking tape, but you could technically paint without it, but because you have to get so much paint in there, you just really can't because it goes everywhere. I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a little white patch. The white patches in in and around here. But yeah, so we'll wait for that to dry. If we've washed the brush and the roller out, just use water because it's not gloss. So you can just rinse them under the tap, get all the paint out. It's all clean. Our gloss brush is in some terps from yesterday when we did the skirting boards. So that's all good. Yeah. So yeah, we carry on. So we've given the orange a second coat. I think it's come out quite good. Quite impressed with that. Um, so now we've got to get the rest of the walls done. So as you can see, we've masked up. Uh, there we go. All the windows. And the skirting board where we've painted. So there's just that bit of skirting board to do there where those stuff where that stuff is. And this is the colour that the walls are going to be. You can see the difference in how much light it's going to make the room, so that's good. So I've just done one coat on there. This is one coat uh paint, so it should hopefully only take one coat. Although being a textured wall, it's never quite a guarantee. But this is Dulux paint, it's not real coats, and you generally find that's better. And so far it seems to have covered well, that's still wet because I've just done it. And again we've masked up all around there. So it's got to do the little bits of edging. And uh, yeah, come back and see how it looked in a bit. So we've done that bit of the ceiling. We're going to do the rest of it white I think. I don't know why, just fancy it. So we've started doing this wall. So I've done up to here, so I've done around the radiator first. And up to the top of the window and the inside of the window so all I'll do now is do that top bit and then do this side so it's all split into bits and it's a bit easier I also somehow managed to get a bit of blue paint on there which I've rubbed and it's taking the orange out so we've got a bit of touch up to do but there's always going to be a bit of touch up to do afterwards anyway so uh, but yeah I don't know how I managed that <laughs> but there we go so to give you an update, we've done that wall, we've moved all the furniture across, we've done that wall, and now we're just doing this last little bit here. Uh, because it's such a narrow space, because I can't literally move my bed anywhere else, without taking a part, which I don't want to do. Um, we've done the skirting, we've done the skirting freehand. Uh, skirting's just wet, because we've only just done it. It's still wet all around here as well, where we've then paint it up to it so you've got to be really careful do not do this I do not advise you do this at all do your skirting wait for it to dry mask it off do your wall um, but because we are safe place we've done the uh, the bit between the roof I'm not bothered about getting paint on the ceiling because that's going to be painted anyway um, and then we've done the like the edging along the skirting as well after that's ready so we've just got to basically fill in the rest now with the roller so here we go so here we are, let me tell you that way, that's better. It's all done, the room looks much brighter now. So it's all good, all down here is done. Just a bit of rubbish we've got to take out. Got a little bit of patching up to do there, just where some bits come off with the marking tape, because this paint's not really very good. Um, just to give you an idea of paints and stuff, we bought the orange, which was a Wilco's paint, and half a tin did that wall. <laughs> Uh, and it's the thing I find with Wilco's paint is, is it, it dries with a kind of a chalky feel and 
it's not the greatest obviously as you can see that bit's come off there um, and then the rest of it we did with Dulux one code and it's it's gone on very well and there's still about a quarter of the tin left unless we've done all the other walls in it and it's only taken one coat now I know you're thinking ah yes but I bet the Wilco's paint was cheaper it was but only by a fiver it cost 20 quid for the Dulux paint and 15 for the Wilco so it's probably better spending the extra fiver because if you're having to do this whole room in that paint you'd need two tints Whereas you could do the whole room in just, with just one tip with the Dulux. So it's kind of a false economy thinking, always cheaper is a better value. It's not always the case. If you're just doing one more, then obviously it's fine. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. What do you think? Just got to put everything back now, break my drawers. Uh, we're going to get a thin pair of drawers to go in that space there. And then we're going to put another one of these shelves across there, just above, um, well, just in line with the top of that cabinet there. Uh, to give us some extra space and I'm going to put some little shelves on here for some shoes because why not um, yeah but it's looking good so here we go finished article got our shoes well the good shoes the rest are in the cupboard uh, all this is now tidy you can actually walk around the bed now obviously You've seen the walls have already been painted. I've got the flags back up, some of them. I'm going to put one more in the middle. Uh, a little bit of stuff there to sort out. And some stuff there that I need to get some coat hangers for. Because I've run out of coat hangers. Because I'm now using that cupboard as well for clothes. And there's our new little set of drawers. We've got our second shelf up. We've got our banana sign back up on the wall. Uh, second shelf is fairly easy to put up. Got some new brackets, as you can see there. Got the crossbars in them. All our soft friends are here. We've got some bags there. They've got to be sorted out. But I need something to put what's in them. To put them on the shelf. So they're just, they're just in bags for the moment. Luggage has got some bedding and stuff in that was in that cupboard. And then top cupboard. Top top uh, top cupboard. Top shelf's all sorted out. Pictures are back up. What do we think? Is it better than it was? And they've got a little things to sort out, I've got to go some coat hangers and um, that's got all my hats in so I didn't know if I was going to do like a hat thing but I think I'm just going to put them in the bottom of the wardrobe for now but we'll see so yeah, what did you think? good change or bad change? smiley face or not? so as you know I've recently sorted out my bedroom and I bought these shelves behind me, these nice floating shelves that I put my shoes on but they are not the first floating shelves that I bought. I actually bought some from B&Q. Now, they were 50p cheaper than these ones, I think. They are like 735 or 750 I can't remember now. <clears throat> but here's the thing. They arrived, and I didn't read the description, so partly my fault. No fixings. You only got the shelf. You didn't get the thing to put the shelf on the wall. Which is a bit stupid when it's a floating shelf. Now, I know you're thinking, that's not too bad though. Well, how much could the fixing be? One, two pounds? No, 12. 12 pounds to put the shelf on the wall. So I took them back and I got these, which are available from Homebase and Argos for like eight quid. I mean, how stupid is that? Come on now. Jet plane headed up to the sky. Spread wings and clouds getting...